Hello, my name is Justin Perkins, and this is another edition of WaveLab Workflows. In today's episode, we're going to be comparing WaveLab Elements to WaveLab Pro, because, of course, on the Steinberg website, there is a comparison chart, but I think it's a little bit hard to do some of the comparisons just looking at a chart, so I thought this video would help show some of the differences between WaveLab Elements and WaveLab Pro. I'm going to go through that soon. I also wanted to mention that as of today, there's a new update to WaveLab. It's version 11.2. And with this version, it's no longer possible to use the USB dongle or the old e-licensor system. It has to be using the new Steinberg Activation Manager app, which of course allows you to use WaveLab and many other Steinberg products without the USB dongle. So most people really like this new um, activation system because you can use it on your laptop without carrying anything around. I really enjoy it, but be careful and just know that you need the, uh, the new system for that. And that's out today. And the other kind of notable thing for Elements users, WaveLab Elements, you can now insert up to eight plugins in every section, which I'm going to go through. There used to be a limitation of two plugins, and now it's up to eight. So I think users of Elements will find that to be a nice improvement. That's part of why I waited till today to do this video, because I knew that this update was coming, and I thought it would be good to uh, wait until that update is out to show you the differences, because it is nice to have a few more plugin slots. But we're going to get into it soon. If anyone has any questions along the way, feel free to ask in the chat. I try to monitor those. At the end of the video, there'll be just a general WaveLab Q&A. If you have any WaveLab questions or any mastering questions, happy to answer those. If you're not familiar, there's a website called wavelabhelp.com. That's a place where you can watch this video again and a bunch of other live streams that I've done. You can download a bunch of my WaveLab settings and presets and things like that just to get you started um, if you're new to WaveLab. And of course, we have the WaveLab users group on Facebook if you want to ask any questions and interact with other WaveLab users. It's a good place to go. So let's just get into it. If there's no initial questions, everything appears to be working. Um, just some basics. Um, and before I forget, um, you know, as you probably know from my other videos, my preferred layout um, for WaveLab looks a little bit like more like this. And I have the master section floating. But for today's video, I'm going to be using the default layouts for both apps, just because I think that gives a more fair comparison and a good starting point. So I'm going to be using the default layouts for today. Just a couple basics. Um, WaveLab Elements has a, a limitation of 96K sample rate. I personally think 96 is plenty. That's typically what I work at. I do get some remastering work and archival work that comes in at 192K, so that could be a problem for some people having a 96K limitation. But for the most part, um, 96K is pretty much fine for most of my work. So since I use WaveLab Pro, of course, I have the ability to go up to 384 kilohertz. Sample rate is the maximum for WaveLab Pro, whereas again, Elements is a maximum of 96K. Um, we'll get into this a little bit more later when I'm showing you stuff, but WaveLab Elements has a limitation of eight audio montage tracks. So I'm looking at the audio montage right now in my test session that I have queued up here. Um, I only have one track showing. You can add more tracks. And again, Elements has a limitation of 8. Pro has a limitation of, it says, greater than 1,000. In the comparison chart, I've never tried to get up to 1,000. I've never run out of montage tracks. So there's basically no limitation there in Pro. Both, of, both versions have 64-bit floating point um, processing. And you can actually go into the preferences and uh, decide if you want to do 32-bit float or 64-bit. Again, that's just for the plug-in processing. If you load in a 24-bit file, the audio becomes floating point when you start doing processing. So it's important to 
understand the precision in which you're working, but they both go up to 64-bit float, so that's great. Um, I'm not a big surround sound and multi-channel user. I just don't work in that field. Um, but Elements can edit up to 5.1 channels of audio, whereas Pro can edit 22.2 channels of multi-channel audio. So if you're a surround user or multi-channel audio worker, um, you can do some basic stuff in Elements, of course, but Pro is going to have a higher channel count. Both apps, Elements and Pro, can play video files. And a recent feature of WaveLab um, is that you can load in a video file, fix up the audio, and then export or render a new video file that has the cleaned up audio and the video remains untouched. And uh, they both have video tracks for that. You can just find that in the plus menu. You can add a video track. Again, I don't do a lot of video um, work myself, so I didn't have anything queued up for that, but just wanted to mention it. Um, and before I get into some actual demonstrations, um, for those that don't know what a DDP file is, DDP is basically the common file format for creating a CD master. And some of you may be thinking that CDs are no longer relevant, but I think most busy mastering engineers will tell you that they do master a lot of projects that still go to CD. So it's important to be able to create a DDP file um, for a lot of mastering engineers and elements. Well, elements can burn CDs in a limited capacity. Um, it cannot export a DDP file or render a DDP file. So if that's important to you, you're going to want to look at WaveLab Pro uh, for that, because it's very easy once you have your project laid out to along with rendering your WAV files to render a DDP of the project for CD production. I also find DDP to be very great for project approval because you can send a DDP player, which Steinberg offers at no cost for WaveLab users. So your clients can listen to the DDP on their computer and approve it, make sure everything's good to go before you send it off to the CD manufacturer. So um, again, DDP is only in WaveLab Pro. And the other thing that's only in WaveLab Pro is the batch processor. I, I'm, I, I'm also not a big user of a batch processor. Um, I explained why in some other videos, but this is WaveLab Pro's batch processor. You can basically load in a bunch of files and then create a, a plug-in chain or a processing chain and have it process a bunch of stuff. Some people like to render their high-res master files and then have the batch processor batch processor create, you know, the 16-bit and MP3 versions. I don't like to work that way, but again, the batch processor is handy for a lot of different tasks. And again, you're going to find that in WaveLab Pro and not so much in WaveLab Elements. So let's get into some actual things that I want to demonstrate. Um, as you'll see, I'm going to be toggling between WaveLab Pro and WaveLab Elements on my screen. So if you see this happening, this is WaveLab Elements. As you see in the top left, and this is WaveLab Pro. And I'm mostly going to be focusing on the audio montage. Um, as you'll see, the, the two layouts look a little bit different. And that's because one thing I wanted to talk about first is lanes. Lanes are somewhat new to WaveLab 11. And it's fairly common when people master albums to maybe want to stagger the songs on two different lanes. Because you may have a point where things crossfade. I tried to do a quick mock-up of an album here and i believe there's yeah there's two songs that crossfade here um so if you're doing something like that it's nice to have it on lanes you can crossfade songs um on a single track in elements but um it's not quite as elegant of a solution in my opinion now you could make another stereo track and stagger them that way um but lanes are a cool thing for Certain mastering practices, some people like to use them for stems. If you're mastering from stems, you can create one audio track in the montage, and then you could stack your stems on different lanes. But lanes, again, are only going to be in WaveLab Pro and not WaveLab Elements. And, and one thing I wanted to mention is, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be a salesperson here, but there is a reason why it's called WaveLab Pro. If, if you're mastering projects on a daily basis or even 
most of your week or most of your time is spent mastering audio, I, I really think you're going to want or need WaveLab Pro. And it's pretty affordable, especially if you catch it. You know, there's a lot of promotions throughout the year. WaveLab Elements is still a very powerful program for editing audio and some basic mastering tasks. There's a reason why it's called Elements. There's a reason why the cost is a little bit lower than WaveLab Pro. But, I mean, it's called Pro for a reason. I mean, it's, it's not called WaveLab, you know, unnecessary or WaveLab um, extra things you don't need. I mean, it really is a professional tool. And cost-wise, you know, when I was... Before I was a WaveLab user, I was looking at other programs such as Sequoia, you know, and those are easily, you know, three, you know, close to four times the cost of WaveLab Pro. If you look at the full version of Sequoia or some other popular mastering specific program. So I really think WaveLab Pro, even the normal price is very affordable and the sale prices can be really great um, if you keep an eye on those. So there are some differences. I, I So I personally feel like if you're working and mastering on a very regular basis, there's just some things that are going to make your day easier, go faster, your work better. It's going to make your life a lot easier. But again, Elements is a great place to start and do basic tasks, which we'll get into. Um, so as mentioned, um, and before I get too far, um, you know, for those that don't know WaveLab, WaveLab has, and let me show you in Pro, WaveLab has a number of places to insert plugins. You can insert a plugin right on what's called the clip. So if I, I could put a plugin right on this first song, and it's only going to affect that song, and that would be the clips tab. There's a place to insert plugins on a track, which is not a CD track, but rather a audio montage track, or you know just a track that you would think of in your Cubase or Pro Tools session. So if you put a plugin on the track, it's of course going to affect all these songs the same, which is not something you commonly would want to do, but it's it's there. Um, montage output is another place where you can insert plugins. That's where you may want to put something like your final limiter, final dithering, something that you want to affect all the songs equally, and of course after all the clip effects. So it's kind of like last in your chain. And then there's the master section, which is after all of that, and not necessarily tied to your montage. You have to load and save it separately, which I'm not a fan of personally. So I don't use the master section a whole lot. Um, although I will show you a few things that I do use. Um, but the master section comes after all your inspector plugins for the montage. And again, that would affect everything globally. So there's basically, f basically four places to insert plugins. Clip, track, output... I won't get into groups today, um, but that's also in the montage and then the master section. So my whole point of that was in WaveLab Elements, you used to only have two plugin slots per, per section. So the clip effects, you could only do two, which is fairly limiting. So as of today, there's eight slots, so you can insert, um, and I'm in Pro. Let me switch back to Elements to really show you. Um, you know, you could insert an EQ, you can insert master rig, you can, you can keep going all the way up to eight plugins now, which is kind of nice um, for elements users. Let's just load up a basic EQ. So again, you're going to go all the way up to eight plugins, which is nice, and that's for clips, tracks, montage output, and the master section. So really big upgrade as far as number of plugins that you can insert um in pro i believe it's 16 now i honestly never run out of slots anymore in wavelab pro I, I should have wrote down that number but you get a even greater number of plugin slots in wavelab pro um one and for those that are new to wavelab i've done a whole video that you can find on youtube or wavelabhelp.com that talks about all the places where you can insert plugins and things like that. So I don't want to get too far off track with things like that. Um, one kind of big difference in the metering department is the loudness meter. Um, WaveLab Pro has a cool and very accurate um, loudness meter. So I'm going to play. These are just tests. This is just um, pink noise. This is in an actual album, so that things are fairly quiet. Um, I guess you can see if I turn it up. 
So the loudness meter is going to be your LUFS readings and things like that. So you have, of course, integrated short-term and momentary LUFS. Um, it's a really great built-in meter. It's one of the things that sets WaveLab apart from a lot of when people try to master in, you know, they're mixing DAWs. Those tend to not have great metering um, solutions, whereas WaveLab has a ton of great meters built in, um, both Elements and Pro. But as I was going to show you, WaveLab Pro has the loudness meter. Elements um, does not have the loudness meter. You can see all the um, meters up in the menu system. And this one has, Elements has eight meters. Uh, you know, time code, you could argue if that's a meter or not, but basically eight meters. You'll see that the loudness meter is missing. There is a level meter, so you can see your, you know, RMS readings and your peak levels. And I also kind of like this pan you know, this shows you your left and right balance, which can be interesting to look at. Um, so one big difference in my eyes is the lack of the loudness meter in um, Elements versus Pro. I will give Pro, or sorry, I will give Elements um, a shout out for having the bit depth meter, um, which is over here. It's pretty good for um, testing your renders, testing your incoming files. And, and as I talk about, and I'll show you, you know, the file that I loaded into my montage is a 24-bit file. That's pretty common for mic for mastering engineers to get a 24-bit, you know, mix file from the mix engineer. But what a lot of people don't understand or realize is even if I do a simple gain change and this meter is, um, I usually don't have my meter set up this way, but just that little gain change I did, now you'll see that I have floating point audio. So now you have to decide if you want to dither to 24 bit or 16 or just truncate it and let it be what it is. But a bit depth meter is a really useful meter for mastering engineers because you can really understand what you're doing to, to the audio and when to dither or not, or check for errors, all sorts of stuff. So I think it's cool that elements um, also has this bit depth meter right here. And again, I'm not an Elements user, so some of this stuff isn't going to be perfectly set up to how I would prefer it, but um, you get the idea. So bit depth meter um, is right there. I and mean, on the topic of metering, um, you know, Elements does have some cool meters built in. You get a spectrometer, spectroscope, oscilloscope, phase scope, time code, which is actually pretty handy for mastering because a lot of times your client will say, you know, at two minutes on song four, I hear something. Can you do something? And, you know, if you're in your multi-track DAW trying to master, trying to find two minutes on song four is challenging because you only have this top, you know, time code to look at. So you're thinking, okay, this is three minutes and 40 seconds in the session, but where, I, where am I in the song? So you can kind of adjust the time code to be, you know... Um, different things and these song this is a mock session so these songs aren't very long so now i can see that i'm listening to 47 seconds into song four so the time code is pretty useful so you know elements does have a number of cool things as the wave scope um, all these meters here uh, one difference that wave lab pro is going to have is something called supervision which i believe was introduced first in um things like Cubase and Nuendo. But let's go to the Steinberg folder and load up Supervision. It's a, it's a separate plugin, but it's a bunch of meters, and it's very modular, so you can choose from all these meter options and load them up and arrange them in a certain order. This happens to be kind of my preferred meters that I like to use and where I like them to be. But again, this is a plugin that you can load anywhere. I wouldn't... I would probably load it in the playback processing slot, which I'll get to, because that's a very cool feature of WaveLab Pro. But I just wanted to show you what the meter looks like. You know, there's levels. I really like this um, multi-panorama, they call it in, in here, where it it shows you the it shows you the left and right information throughout the frequency spectrum. So you can see that this is pink noise. 
stereo pink noise, but you can see that, you know, the lower frequencies are pretty wide and it narrows as it gets higher. So when you're, when you're mastering music, it's useful to see if your low end is tight. It's almost the opposite of how most music looks right now, but you get the idea with the Supervision plugin. So that's only going to be in Wavelab Pro at this time. Um, it's made by Steinberg, very cool metering, and um, you can insert that anywhere. I'll talk about the playback processing slots in a little bit and why I might insert it there instead of where I just uh, randomly inserted it. Um, Another really big thing for me that Wavelab Pro has that doesn't exist in Elements is reference tracks. And I have a shortcut to add one, but basically you find it right here, reference track. And a reference track has the big letter R on it. And the reason refer reference tracks have many purposes, um, the point of it is obviously to reference some other audio, but what that audio is can be a number of things. Um, reference tracks can be, you can load... Um, sometimes mix engineers or producers will send you a loud and limited version of something they mixed where they said, here's my version with limiting and how everyone is used to it. And of course, then they also send you a non-limited version to master from. That happens pretty commonly. So the ability to insert that, let me just see if I can grab something here. The ability to insert um, the reference version on a reference track is really helpful because you can easily compare the two and yeah so here's a project where I did get some reference versions and it's not going to be totally accurate because it's a different song but as you can see I'm loading the mix engineers reference version on this reference track and in theory you know I could line it up with the version I'm mastering and the reason reference tracks are cool is because when you press this button to listen to it, it bypasses all of the plug-in processing in the montage. So you're not hearing, of course, you're not hearing any clip effects unless you add them to this version, which you wouldn't. You're not, but you're not hearing any audio montage track effects. You're not hearing any audio montage output effects or even the master section. It's all bypassed. So when you solo their reference version, it's not going through any of your plugin chain, which is kind of a hassle when you're trying to master in Pro Tools or even Cubase, because if you load in a file on a normal track, it's of course going to go through any master fader processing you have. So then you have to bypass that plugin processing to hear just the file. Um, so it becomes a headache. So a reference track solve that where you're just, when you press this button, all you're hearing is the reference you know, version no plugins, and you can also send reference tracks to different hardware outputs. I happen to have a a large interface. It's an RME AES card, so I have basically eight stereo outputs to work from. So I've set up reference paths um, on that card, so I can actually just hit play, and then on my monitor controller, I can list toggle between you know what I'm doing in WaveLab versus the reference track. So I can AB it right on my monitor controller because you can route reference tracks to different outputs um, and many of them. The other use for reference tracks is um, album sequencing. Sometimes clients will send me, obviously they send each song to master. Sometimes they'll send me a mock-up of the full album with all the song transitions, just how they want it. Some crossfades, some close, some far away, maybe a fade out. A lot, it's, it's not for every project, but, you know, and often enough, I'll get a, a mock-up file. And then that what that allows me to do is, again, not the best example, but I could take my, um, I could load in their reference file, the whole album, then I can line up what I'm doing. You know, I can zoom in and line up exactly what, you know, the files I'm mastering from, I can line them up exactly with their reference up to the transient. I can, you know, redo the fades if I need to, just to, to make it match exactly how they wanted it. And of course you can listen to it too, but a lot of it can be done visually. But the, the nice thing about reference tracks is you never have to worry about them being included in the rendering path. So I don't have to mute it or deactivate it or delete it when I'm ready to render this project. Um, 
I can just leave it there. And it's kind of gray for a reason. It's letting you know that it's there, but it's not going to be in the rendering path. It's not going to be in the playback path. So if I just hit play, I'm not hearing um, both of these files. I'm only hearing the top um, on the normal track. I'm not hearing the reference track. And then the other thing that reference tracks can be nice for is, let's say you're kind of in the middle of mastering a project and you kind of want to see if you got off track. You know, you can right click in the header and you can go to copy clips to track i can copy all these songs to a reference track and i can choose to copy the plugins or not i usually obviously turn all this stuff off so now in my reference track i have an exact copy of all the source files but without any plugin processing without any gain changes and i'm just remembering now that i did a whole um video on reference tracks so if you um Want to know more about reference tracks? Just uh, watch that video. But for me, reference tracks alone are worth the price of WaveLab Pro. I, you know, I think reference tracks came to WaveLab in version 10, and I, now I don't know what I would do without them. I use them all the time for, um, again, referencing the producers. What do they call them? Ref ref mixes, heated mixes. So you know if you're, you know, matching or exceeding what they did. Um, sequencing or even sometimes um let's say you master a song you send it out they want a revision i'll save the montage as version two but then i'll load in my version one put on a reference track right below and then i can toggle between my first version and what i'm trying to do better or different and it's just really reference tracks are really great for uh a whole lot of mastering work. So again, I'd be kind of lost without reference tracks in WaveLab Pro. Um, the other thing that Elements doesn't have, which is um, somewhat specific to my workflow, but I know a lot of other people use it, is um, the custom montage duplicate option. So let me try to get back to another project. So I don't want to get too off track, but my rendering practices involve... Um, Rendering the whole montage first as one long file to lock in the processing. I know a lot of other people that do that too. So that that might look something like um, that might look something like this. This is an EP that I mastered, um, and we're at 96k. What this allows me to do is to downsample this floating point 96k version. Um, and using a series of actions and shortcuts, I can, you know, of course, downsample it and recreate the montage at a lower sample rate. Because I'm working at 96K. At some point, we're going to need a 44.1 version. So as you can see here, um, the custom montage duplicate feature just recreated the montage at 44.1 because I downsampled this whole file, this... Um, to 441 again i don't want to get too off track but the custom montage duplicate is something i do every day all day every day um, for every project and would have a hard time working around that now in elements of course you can resample in the master section but that means you have to add probably at least dithering after that which there is one slot for but you also may want to add a true peak limiter before the dither to catch any peaks that occur from the resampling process you know if, if your limiter ceiling is at minus 0 0.2 at 96k and you're and you resample the 44 one there's there's a reasonable chance that your peaks are now going to be you know actually exceeding 0 db and floating point so you may need to or you may just not care but you may want to address that so with elements you only get one slot here unfortunately when ideally you may want, again, a, another safety true peak limiter followed by dithering before you render away. Um, so for me, it's just more of a, in my opinion, it's more of a limited workflow to work that way. Again, not impossible. But with WaveLab Pro, you, you get two, basically get two slots here after the resampler, which is right here. And then, so you have a room for a fine, another, you know, true peak limiter to catch anything like that, and then a, a uh, dither. So those are 
those are kind of the differences there. So, but to avoid all that and to avoid having to save the master section, resampling did their settings with the montage. I just don't even use the master section. Everything's done in the inspector and then using custom montage duplicate. On the topic of dithering, um, both versions come with a dither plugin. This is new to WaveLab 11. Um, in Elements, it's called Lin One Dither. It's it's a very good dither plugin um, made by M A A T. I think it's I don't know how it's pronounced. Matt or Matt. They make some other plugins as well. Um, so this is what you, you know what it looks like. You, you can dither to. Um, 24, 16, or 8-bit. It does have auto-blanking, which typically means that if there is true silence detected, it's going to turn off the dither noise um, in those quiet sections where there's actually no audio. And basically noise shaping on or off. Now, in WaveLab Pro, we have... Very similar, but it's called Lin Pro Dither. And this just gives you a couple more options, like the dither type, and then noise shaping, and just a couple different noise um, profiles. So it's just a little bit more advanced of a dither um, in, in WaveLab Pro. And again, you can insert this plugin anywhere. Um, sort of the one one way of working, like I mentioned, is using the master section, and of course, it's available there. Um, and you'll notice that there's only limited plugins. I don't want to get off track again, but there's only limited plugins in the final effects and dithering slot. But I guess I should mention it because I'm going to talk about playback processing soon. But you just go to the plugins section. Um, you go to organize. You look at your plugins. And you can um, assign certain plugins to be available in other spots. So by default, most are available in the effects slot, which is going to be the inspector and the first part of the master section. You can have plugins be available in the final effects dithering slot or the playback processing slot. You just have to go in here and check the box. Um, so now this would be available in playback processing. I don't think I would ever want auto pan to be available there, but you get the idea of how you can make plugins be uh, appear here. Because as you see, this list is a lot shorter than you know this list. So I figured I'd mention it. Um, so that's kind of the dithering portion of this um, video where, where you can insert dithering and what kind of choices you get. You know, the Elements version just has a slightly more limited version of the dithering plugin. And kind of on that same topic, I want to talk about playback processing. Um, playback processing is... I think a very useful plugin um, slot. And it's down here in the master section. And WaveLab Elements just does not have the playback plot, playback processing slot whatsoever. It's just not there. WaveLab Pro does. And as you can see, I have a plugin inserted there called Clarity M. For those that don't know, Clarity M is just a little um, hardware meter by TC Electronic. It uh, it has basically a lot of the same stuff WaveLab has built in. I'm just sort of used to using it. It's on my desktop. It's small. It doesn't take up any of my screen real estate. Um, comes in handy if I'm using other apps, but it's just there, so I use it. And you get five slots. Um, so the other use for playback processing could be something like room or headphone correction. Um, you know, Sonarworks, which I believe is called Sound ID. Um, headphone correction, can opener, all this stuff where you want to hear it or see it, but you don't want it to be ever included in the rendering path. Um, you know, when Sonarworks first came out, I kept getting mixes from mix engineers where they forgot to disable Sonarworks when they bounced their mix. So I'm getting this weird mix that has their room correction EQ. And I know that Sonarworks has made it better, but my whole point is you can avoid all that by using the playback processing slots for anything like meters, room headphone correction. Um, again, stuff you want to see and hear, but you don't want it to ever be part of the rendered files. And also you don't want it to be part of your wave lab metering. Cause let's say you are you know trying to master a record and you're looking at the level meter. 
Well, you know, if you have sonar works or something inserted in the playback processing, it's going to be, of course, changing the level, the EQ, all sorts of stuff. And plugins that are inserted here do not um, influence the metering of, of wave of the internal metering of WaveLab. So another, so basically, I keep Clarity M in here all the time, and with my master section settings, I never have to reload it. So they're just always there, no matter what project I'm working on. Every time I open WaveLab, my master section comes back just how I left it, which is pretty bare bones. Faders locked at zero. Um, and whatever playback processing I want, which some people might have more. Um, this is all I have. But the playback processing is a really cool section. You get It used to be two, and now, as of recently, WaveLab, WaveLab Pro has five slots. Um, on a slightly similar topic, speaker configuration, not something I use... So I only had the one set up, but again, WaveLab Elements does not have a speaker configuration section. And I think people just use this kind of as a virtual monitor controller. You can have this set up to feed different speakers. You know, configuration one could feed outputs one and two of your interface. Um, speaker configuration two could feed outputs three and four, which are feeding different speakers. It's basically like a bare bones monitor controller. I don't know if I would trust myself to not blow up my speakers um, with something like this, but as you can see, you can change the level here. I like to just keep it s snapped at zero. And you'll, you'll notice if it's lower than zero dB, it's, the little thing is green. If it's higher than zero dB, it's red to just let you know that it's it might be loud. And then you can, of course, snap it to zero. I just keep it snapped to zero and hidden. I don't want to accidentally bump it. But speaker configuration, some people seem to use it. I don't personally use it, but it exists in, in WaveLab Pro. Um, I want to get into some other more practical stuff like rendering, because um, that's a big part of what mastering engineers do is, of course, render master files, um, things like that. WaveLab Pro, it, the way that it renders is one of the main reasons why I use WaveLab in general, because I like to arrange my montage, only entered the track markers and project information one time, and whatever I render, that information is part of how the files are named, part of how the metadata is embedded, part of how the CD text looks for DDPs. It's really smooth. You enter the information in once, and a lot of that information can be kind of auto-populated if you have your files named correctly. And again, I've done plenty of videos about metadata and project rendering and all sorts of that kind of stuff. I don't want to get too much into it today. Um, one thing I forgot to check before um, I started this, because I don't use elements, is to see if there is a CD wizard. Um, does not seem to be a CD wizard in elements. The CD wizard is very handy in WaveLab Pro because it brings up this window that lets you, this is how I usually start. Basically, when you arrange your songs on the timeline, this box will make a marker for each song and do a whole bunch of stuff automatically for you, which really helps uh, speed up the process, the CD wizard. Um, in Elements, you can, of course, you know, make your markers and things like that, but it's just a little more manual of a process. Um, and the other thing with rendering is, you know, again, uh, in WaveLab Pro, you can render all your files um, at one time. Let me see if I can grab a project here. So here's something I recently worked on. Not that that matters, but, um, you know, once I have, once I'm in this position, I can render... And I'm just going to make a test folder on uh, my desktop so I can find it easily. I can render all these songs, a WAV file of each song in one command. So there's track one, track two. It's rendering very fast. Um, the only thing running is dithering because all my processing is locked in. But as you can see, I got a nice um, folder of the files, nicely named. There's metadata in the files. I could have added artwork. I just didn't. Um, so everything's really, really um, 
populate with metadata. It looks great. I did it in one command. With elements, you kind of it, it would drive me nuts, but you have to go one file at a time. So I can render track one, and I can pick the format. Um, let's just say 24-bit wave. I'll make a test O2 folder for, for these renders. Um, so for me, I would have a hard time doing each track one at a time for each project every day. Um, there could be a little bit hacks, ways to get around this, but for me, that's that's a challenge for me to, to would be to do that, to render. I know a lot of people are doing singles now, but I do a lot of EPs and albums, so I just, if I was trying to get by with elements, that would be a, a significant slowdown is rendering each track one at a time. And also that kind of complicates songs that overlap, which goes into my whole rendering practice where I render the whole montage. Now, um, in Elements, you get basically three things that you can render. You can render the whole montage in one file, as one file, one pass. You can render the active track in one pass, or you can render what I was doing, which is a specific region or an album track or a song. Um, in WaveLab Pro, you get all these options for rendering. You can render the whole montage. You can render a selected audio range. You can render active track, track group, um, union of selected clips. There's all these choices that you can render. Um, but of course, and so much of this stuff is on presets. Um, you'll notice that WaveLab Elements is missing render presets. And you'll notice that I have a lot of render presets so um, this all saves me time throughout the day I would be again it's a huge part of why I use WaveLab in general is all these render presets gets the job done very quickly repetitive tasks are not even a thing that I think about but you can, if you want to pause it you can see all the render sources things that you can render in Pro versus Elements which is not much. Now, the audio editor part of WaveLab, which I haven't talked about much, you can render the selected audio range in the audio editor, but again, the audio editor is a more destructive environment, maybe more useful for people doing sound design or making loops, things like that. I, I rarely use the audio editor. It does have a spectrogram view, which is not very exciting because this is pink noise, but it doesn't have a spectral editor like... Um, WaveLab Pro has, you know, the spectrogram, and then it has spectral editing, similar to spectral layers or Isotope RX. So that's something you're going to see in Pro and not in Elements. And as I mentioned, Elements has very limited metadata cap capabilities. There is a metadata tab, but I, I was doing some testing. You can't do much with it. You can type that stuff in, but you're going to want it to be different per song, whereas WaveLab Pro, and this is all set up in my metadata presets from over at wavelabhelp.com, but as you can see from my preset, you know, it's taking things like the CD track name, and then it's going to put it in the song title metadata of the rendered WAV file and the album title, um, and anything you want, the ISRC, and it's just all so fast, and it's on autopilot basically. Once you have the right presets, I don't even have to think about it. I don't have to. I don't have to use a separate app for metadata management. It's just, it just takes it from existing information in the montage. So if you want more info on that, watch the metadata episode. It's kind of a big one. Um, but Elements just has such limited metadata capabilities that um, I would probably use a third-party app to really do metadata. If I was an Elements user, it's just not really set up for that. Um, this is the WaveLab Elements. You know, of course, you can use your third-party plugins like you could in any program. These are the Steinberg plugins that Elements comes with. Uh, I'll leave it here if you want to pause it. It has a fair amount. It has Master Rig, which is um, a popular plugin. It's like a modular plugin similar to maybe ozone where you can add different things like a limiter a compressor a saturator imager and you can put them in any order uh, pretty cool plugin the pro version of 
and let me get out of this project so I don't goof that one up. Um, the pro version of WaveLab, uh, the master rig, just has a few more modules. It has compressor A and B, um, equalizer A, B, dynamic EQ, A and B. So it just lets you do a little bit more. It's just a little more advanced. And I believe the, um, so the multi-band version has at least four there. Um, this appears to possibly be limited to two two bands of multi-band. Yeah, one or two bands. So you don't get much multi-band compression in elements, but it's it's a starting point. Um, and then here are the plugins, the Steinberg plugins that come with Pro. I'll, I'll leave it there if you want to pause it. There's some testing plugins called Eat CPU that you can ignore. Um, but basically you get an idea of all the plugins that come with Pro, like Frequency 2, um, D-Reverb, um, things like that. Some pretty cool Steinberg plugins that come with Pro um, and somewhat limited in, in, in elements. Um, I already talked about there's basically no spectral editing in elements, but there's a spectrogram view. Um, and one thing that I know most busy mastering engineers will tell you is important is the ability to replace a file. Um, you know, sometimes you're mastering a project and the client has to send you a new file because they had to adjust the mix. And in a lot of programs, it's kind of a pain to replace a file. Um, you know, it seems like a simple task, but with... Um, WaveLab Pro, I have a shortcut, of course, because I have a lot of shortcuts, so it's going to take me a minute to find the uh, the slow way. But yeah, you go to the Insert tab, Replace Audio File, um, and you can browse for it. So this, this allows you to, um, with an existing project, you can just update it to a newer version of the mix file, and, then it, and it's, it goes right in line in the timeline. All the clip effects that you have inserted stay there. Um, it's 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 hard to explain how simple it is, but it's basically just swapping out one file and using a different source file because they have to update the mix. So you don't have to kind of manually add it and move things around and re-add plugins and realign the time. And it's, it's a very fast way to replace a file. Um, a couple other things I noticed today when I was checking out Elements a little bit more is you don't seem to be able to save plugin chains. So as you can see in WaveLab, Pro, I have a I have a number of plugin chain chains saved. Um, this is kind of a big one, but you'll get the idea when I load it. And I just did it on the output for some reason. Normally, I would put this on a clip. So let me just um, remove all these plugins. Let's say this song. I want to add a a chain of kind of usual plugins. You can, you can kind of save a whole chain of stuff that you like to use and just have it kind of set to zero and get started from there. Whereas Elements, you, you can insert plugins, but there's no plugin chain. Um, you, know, you can copy a plugin and paste it, but I don't, I'm not seeing a way to save plugin chains um, and things like that. And, and on the topic of plugins, um, in Pro, you can control, obviously... There's a few ways to change the gain. There's the Clips tab, which Elements also does not have a Clips tab. Um, the Clips tab is really nice for managing like the start and end time of your clips. If you want to shorten it by a second, you can just edit it that way. Um, so the Clips tab I find to be really useful for just kind of seeing the details of where all your files are placed. But in the Clips tab, there's gain. There's pre and post gain, and the pre and post stands for before and after your clip effects. Um, but also you, you have these volume lines. So I'll, I'll do it on this one to simplify things. You know, let's say I want to automate the beginning of a song to be louder. Um, but I have a, let's say I happen to have a compressor on this clip. Um, this volume line you can control if it is before or after um, the clip effects. So I don't know this plugin super well. Let me get one that I know well with some meters. So 
So as you can see, it's doing some gain reduction. This line right here is level automation of the song for, you know, I just made this up. Um, but as you can see, the line is before it's before the clip effects, because when I play it now with it lowered, and it's not doing what I am intending. I'm sorry, this is live live streaming. Well, I think I just had the threshold so low that it was not registering. So as you can see, as I raise the as I raise the volume of this clip, it's doing more gain reduction. I just had the threshold set ridiculously low. Um, so this 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 affects how much is feeding into the compressor of the clip effects, which is you know important for things like deessing, um, general compression, multiband. If I press this button here. The little icon indicates that the effects come first and then the gain envelope. So now, as I change the level of the song, you can see the compression isn't changing because this level change is happening after um, the clip effects. So that's one thing you can do in WaveLab Pro, but not in Elements, is control whether your volume automation or your panning automation is before or after your clip effects, which is... Pretty handy in mastering, actually. I, I, I tend, and Elements defaults to having the volume line first and then the clip effects, which is how I tend to work anyways, but it's nice to have that option to change it. Um, the other thing that WaveLab Pro has is plug-in parameter automation, which is new to WaveLab 11. But of course, if you want to automate an EQ or a threshold throughout the song, you can do that with clip effects. Um, you can't do it with track or output effects or master section effects, but you can do it with clip effects in WaveLab Pro, uh, but there is not any plug-in parameter automation in WaveLab Elements. Um, just checking my list here. So as I talked about, and I'll, I'll show it so you can really see, and if you want to pause it, these are all the tool windows you have. A big one that's missing for me in Elements is clips, like I just talked about, and also files. This is... Let me open up another project again. Because uh, the project, the test project I have just has um, one file. But the files tab can be interesting because it shows you all the files involved with the montage and where they're located. So I like having a files tab um, to kind of it helps with project management and things like that. Um, and again, in the test project, it is, this is technically one file over and over again. But, you know, clips tab, um, files tab is really useful to me in, in WaveLab Pro. Um, and in Elements, you, you just have less, um, less things to look at. You, know, you can see your markers tab, which is handy. Um, but there's just a little bit, a little more limitation there as far as what you can see. And again, the clips tab is super handy because, you know, sometimes some, a client will say, can you add a second of space between songs two and three? And, you know, you can kind of drag it and eyeball it, but you could also select that clip and just tell it to start at um, two seconds and seven, 36 milliseconds instead of one so I, I use the Clips tab quite a bit to adjust my track timing if someone has a request as to when, the, when it starts, or two minutes and four seconds, just to add time there. Um, both, both versions have ripple mode, which is obviously pretty useful for mastering because if someone does say, you know, add more space between songs four and five, you can do that and all the relationships between the other songs stay the same. So I'll, I'll go over to Elements and show you that as well. You can turn it off, of course, if you go to the Edit tab and go to None, then you're working more like a mixing program. But Ripple Mode, pretty handy for mastering, um, in my opinion. I've, another big part of why I use WaveLab. Something that I don't use a whole lot, but other people might, is the Live Spectrogram. I'll go back to the um, meters. You can have this be floating. In fact, I thought I did have a... 
shortcut. I somewhere in my normal again I'm using the default view in my normal layout I have a shortcut that makes a big window of this um, live spectrogram which again is not not too exciting on a pink noise but here's a song playing maybe that's a little more interesting but the live spectrogram view can be handy for certain types of work and that just doesn't exist in WaveLab elements so that's a big difference. Um, External effects. Um, this is a big one in the world of mastering because people like to use analog gear sometimes. WaveLab Pro has the external effects plugin that looks very simple, but it allows you to do kind of a send and return of, um, you know, essentially to your analog gear, but it doesn't care about gear. It just cares about your interface. And you want to send it out. You're always kind of monitoring through one and two, but if you want to send the signal out to three and four through some analog equipment and back in to three and four. Um, the external effects plugin can work for that. I personally, if I use analog gear, I, I prefer to play the audio from a reference track out to my analog chain and record it back in on a new track because I'm a little bit old school like that. I like to actually see things happening. I like to record it back in in real time and listen rather than having the external effects plug in and then rendering, because um, then you still have to kind of, what I don't get, people use the external effects is you render it, but then you still have to clean up your heads and tails for the noise floor of your gear, which hopefully isn't much, but I just, I can't really get behind the idea of external effects and just render it away and send it out. I mean, I, I like to see it, trim up the heads and tails, um, things like that. Um, so, to each their own, however you want to work, but Pro has the external effects plugin and Elements does not. Um, let's talk about offline analysis. Um, let's see if I can find a song. Um, so again, I don't use the audio editor too much. Um, it's a destructive environment. Uh, some people like it. I don't care for it, except it is handy for analyzing files. So if you go to analyze global analysis, you can press this button. I'm just going to show you your peak level, um, your digital peaks, your true peaks. Um, and it does have tabs. So you can kind of tab to see the, um, the loudness, whether you want to see RMS or LUFS. Sometimes what I'll do though is I'll, I like to see the peaks, then I can press plus and make a whole new tab and then kind of look at the average loudness, especially if I have to send a screenshot to somebody and say, here's where your peaks are, and then here's the average, then I can do that in one screenshot. But um, that's kind of what you get in Pro is all these other, you know, you get um, some nice readings about integrated LUFS and short-term maximum and short-term um, all that good stuff. Um, and in elements, you get kind of like the metering, you get, let me try to open this file in the analyze tab. Um, which forgive me, it's a little different in elements. I don't use this, but you basically only get the, you don't get any LUFS stuff. You get peak level, um, and your RMS stuff, but you don't get the LUFS um, another, something I've kind of been using a little more lately when people send mix revisions is the fi audio file comparator. So let's try to think what I just did a revision on. Oh yeah, this one. I'm trying to see if there's any others that I did a revision on. Again, live live streaming but well let me just go to this one because i kind of know that i got some here you can compare two files um the difference and these are going to be a little more different than usual but i have two mix you know the client sent me a new mix to change some things as you can kind of see when i toggle the waveforms but you can go to file comparator and you, you have there's only two audio files open, so it just guess the right ones, but sometimes you have to tell it which two to compare. And it's gonna create basically a null 
file. This is the difference between the two mixes. Now, th th this is a big difference, but it's kind of nice for if the client says, I fixed one vocal line, you can kind of see that in the resulting null file, the only difference might just be one section has something turned up or, you know, it's, it's just a good way to compare to see what's different between two files. And again, that's only in WaveLab Pro. This is the file comparator. Um, external editor, only in Pro. Um, of course, WaveLab does have some, you know, the audio editor itself is an external editor and it has some spec spectral editing features, but you can also send audio from the, either the montage or the editor to an external editor, whether it's Spectra Layers, what's SoundForge, RX. I have mine set up as RX just because I haven't had time to learn Spectra Layers. But with my shortcut, I'll, do, I'll show you the slow way, but you can highlight, let's say you hear a problem with this section, you can highlight it. You can go to Edit, External Editor, and you could have a list of a few. I only happen to have one. So the first time takes a while. Again, this is pink noise, so that's why it looks ridiculous. But um, so now I've just sent this little portion of audio to RX. I could, you know, de-click it. I don't even know what's going to do, just pink noise. But whatever you want to do, do your edit. Um, this is a ridiculous edit, but save the file, close it. And now when you go back to WaveLab, you can see that the changes I made are now in line with the uh, the montage. So external editor feature is pretty cool for some users. And again, that's only in WaveLab Pro, not Elements. And you can choose the external editor of your choice. Um, you go to Preferences. Um, you go to Preferences. Sorry, I lost the screen, but I think I'm back. Go to Preferences and... Um, global external applications and um, it tends to find um, eligible apps for you but if you want to you can also just you know find uh, an external app that, that you may want to use in conjunction with WaveLab so it's a pretty cool feature somewhat new I think WaveLab 10 it started um, another thing that's missing in elements that I absolutely would need is CD track groups, and you might wonder why. Um, I actually use CD track groups for vinyl and cassette masters. It's typically, we're delivering a single wave file for each side of the vinyl or cassette. And what CD track, and I did a whole video on this as well, so you want to watch back more detail. You can find it on wavelabhelp.com. But basically, if, I'm, if I've got an approved album and I need to make a vinyl master, I do a save as, of course, uh, so I don't screw up the, the approved montage, but I do a save as, and then you can assign um, CD, you know, it's kind of silly because it's called CD track group, but it's really for vinyl and cassette is what I find it most useful for. So, And again, this is a very short montage, but um, if you hover over the group, it tells you how long it is, which is also helpful for creating vinyl masters because sometimes clients don't know where side A or B should start. And you got to say, well, if you start side B with this song, then it's going to be 18 minutes. And if, and then side A would be 17 minutes. So if you hover, it's nice that it gives you the time of the group. Um, but the CD track group feature allows you to then go to the rendering, um, again, rendering presets. Mine's all set up to render a full wave of just track group A. I can name it what I want, render so f really fast. So for me, CD track groups are essential, only available in Pro and great for actually making vinyl and cassette sides. I'm um, coming to the end of my list here. So if anyone has any questions, get them ready in the chat. Otherwise, we're going to close it out soon because we've been going for an hour. Um, one thing I skipped over, uh, perhaps best to show in the playback processing slot is the encoder checker from Steinberg. And this is just kind of a way to listen to how your master might sound as an MP3 or an AAC. Um, I thought it had Og Vorbis at some point, which is what um, basically what Spotify uses. And I have too high of a sample right now to show you. Um, but the whole point is you can kind of monitor, th you can listen to the original sound or what it's going to sound like in real time as, as you're project is encoded to 
you know, lossy file such as MP3, AAC, Agvorba. So the encoder checker, um, only available in WaveLab Pro and probably most ideally inserted in the playback processing slots so that it's never in danger of being part of the rendered audio. Um, pretty useful tip. I could probably go on for another hour and show the differences, but that's what all the other little videos are for. Um, but again, as I mentioned, the rendering and album arrangement and stuff is a huge reason why I use WaveLab Pro specifically. Um, I've tried them all, and especially as a Mac user, I keep coming back to WaveLab Pro because it's just lets me get things done so fast. You know, aside from making the processing decisions and rendering time, if you load up a lot of plugins, I mean, it's it's so fast to just arrange, you know, load in the files, arrange, set the spacing between songs, you know, fade out the heads and tails, do any overlaps, manage the markers, um, name the markers if they're not, if the file names aren't correctly named, name them and push that everywhere to CD text, to metadata, to file names. The render presets allow you really great customization of how you want the files named. You know, do you want the counter, which is the track number? Um, you can add all all this stuff. You know, you could add your name, your mastering initials to it. You can customize so much stuff with rendering, the naming scheme, and the presets. So um, I could go on. Thanks for watching this. It doesn't seem like there's any questions on the differences between elements and pro i think i kind of covered everything in, in pretty much detail um so if you want more information on some of the features i mentioned obviously wavelabhelp.com has a growing number of videos for all the little things like custom montage duplicate and metadata and rendering and vinyl sides and uh, plug-in automation plug-in inserting basically everything you want to know about wavelab is there so thanks again for watching. Thanks for using WaveLab or considering using WaveLab. And if you have any questions, find us in the WaveLab users group on Facebook. Or another great resource is the WaveLab forum on the Steinberg website. Another great place to interact with WaveLab users, WaveLab developers, people from Steinberg, all sorts of great stuff. Have a great afternoon or evening or whatever it may be as you're watching this, and we'll see you next month.